Hi there, welcome back to the English class. We have been dealing with biodiversity in our previous readings, Unit 6. Today, we will take up Reading C. Now, as you see, I am surrounded by gloom and I am surrounded by trash. Now, that should give you a glimpse into what is the tale of these villages. The tale of three villages. Three villages destroyed to the root just because we, have, we need a place to dump our industrial wastes. We boast of the industrial revolutionization of the world. But then, what are we doing to our biodiversity? It is on the verge of destruction. Let's look into the tale of each of these villages to understand what is happening to some third world countries in our world. This is the map of Africa and here we have Nigeria and we are going to talk about a town called Koko in Nigeria. Before we start the lesson, let's have a look at some of the newspaper clippings that came around 1986-1987. Sometime in 1987, the Cocotoxic Waste Trap, an Italian swindler, a person who cheats for benefit, Raffelli shipped almost 1 million metric tons of toxic waste, which he claimed were chemicals and raw materials for a proposed fertilizer manufacturing company. Poor little town. That man went to their doorstep promising them jobs, promising them a factory that will give them livelihood. But what was in disguise there? Toxic waste wanting to be dumped onto the villager's head. The killer materials got to Cocoa Port, in, which is the present worry not local government area of the Delta land. And finally landed in the dwelling place of Mr. Sunday Nana. Who is he? He's one of the grandsons of the chief Nana Olomu, who was a legendary founder of the village Koko. Now see what happens next and how the public was de deceived. The story of how Rafaeli outwitted the Nigerian security. That means he outsmarted them, he cheated them too. And he got a berth for the toxic waste at Koko. That means a landing place, a place to put it. How the late Sunday Nana, Mr. Sunday Nana is no more. How he bought the story of the killer product being chemicals for a fertilizer company. Bought the story means he believed in them that yes, my town, my village is going to get some jobs. And he accepted to provide his land for safekeeping of the product until the time the company would be set up. But how death, influenza and other harmful effects of the toxic product began to affect the lives of Koko Indiges, the natives who live in that town, is what we're going to look into in the next few slides. This is an extract from the internet and the courtesy is mentioned right there. Rethinking the Coco Saga. We must never forget what has happened in 1986-1987 because that is where we have to change our thinking. When Italy paid a Nigerian town $100 a month, a mere $100 a month to store toxic waste. Imagine how poverty stricken they are that they don't mind what happens to their lives as long as they get a little money. Following the discovery of toxic waste in Coco, finally somebody told them the truth. A small village in the Delta state, there was a global outcry. All over the world, people began to criticize this action against the despicable activities of unscrupulous European waste dumpers. Despicable means deplorable absolutely unacceptable, unscrupulous European waste dumpers, careless industrialists, world leaders, environmentalists, freedom fighters and rights activists described it as an act of 
toxic terrorism. What is terrorism? An unlawful, forceful act where people are forced to do something against their wishes. And this was termed as toxic terrorism, forcing people to kill themselves. The inhuman dumping elicited robust discussions. That means it evoked, it brought out strong discussions in many local and international fora. Fora means forums, places where people meet and exchange ideas. It led Greenpeace in 1992 to coin the term toxic colonialism. We'll speak about this more a little later. Greenpeace defined toxic colonialism as dumping of industrial waste of the West on territories of the third world. Third world are those countries that don't support either of the superpowers. Now, just because you're not a part of a superpower, is this how you're treated? Uh, you are treated as a dump yard. That Greenpeace started telling the world, do not treat the third world as a dump yard. Flooding markets in Nigeria with counterfeit products. You will not find one genuine medicine in many countries of Africa. All the fake counterfeit medicines are sent there. To, det to detriment of local industries. Detriment means it's harmful, so harmful. is a form of economic imperialism. The two Italian firms had reportedly made the arrangement for the shipping and illegal storage of 18,000 drums of toxic waste in cocoa. This is another extract of the newspapers. Now let's move on to the lesson. The interview. This is an interview with Mr. Sunday Nana by one of the journalists. Mr. Sunday Nana, his wife and four small children live in Koko village in Nigeria. The village is like any other African village, picturesque, that means lovely, vibrant looking, colorful and noisy. That's how a village is, happy and noisy. The Nana's family's house, this is the respectful grandfather of Mr. Sunday Nana who founded this village. Th that is his statue. The Nana family's house too is the same as all the other houses in the village with mud walls and a rusting corrugated iron roof having ridges and grooves corrugated and with children and chickens sharing the same compound. There is one difference however. Outside Mr. Nana's front are three large empty metal drums. The bright red paint flaking away. And what does it show? The danger symbols popping out. Mr. Nana was tricked into keeping drums painted with colors to hide the toxic symbol on those drums. But the skull and crossbones symbol clearly visible on each. And in a clearing 200 meters away from the village, next to a stream that the villagers get their drinking water from, is an enormous pyramid, an enormous pile of identical drums, toxic waste drums reaching to the sky. Can you imagine the number of barrels that were dumped there? Some of them are badly corroded destroyed by chemical reactions, their slimy contents, the thick sludgy content, semi-solid content of various colors, gray, dark green, bright orange, utter chemical sludge from factories leaking out down onto the baked African sand. African soil is so hot and warm, leaking, it's actually, it's called a leaching when chemicals go into pure natural soil, that's what's happening, into the stream. Some have fallen down and rolled or been rolled by playful children, children not realizing what's inside it, death. Some are smoking in the midday heat, some are swelling. If you leave a bottle full of chemicals in the heat, it will swell, swell and burst open someday. Their contents bursting to get out, some have already burst. 
polluting the land and the water without anybody realizing what's happening. Mr. Sunday Nana continues to tell, they came on a Wednesday, said Sunday. Many, many big lorries, they took all day unloading them. No one told us what's in them. They gave the chief a brown paper bag full of dollars. I saw him smiling as the lorries drove away. This was five years ago. So the chief of the town cared nothing about the villagers except the money that he received. Then three months ago, one of the brightest boys in the village, this is the boy who showed the village the truth. Thomas Agonia started university in Lagos. He came home one weekend with a new chemistry book and spent all day looking at the drums, the writings on it, and talking to himself and shaking his head. He was unable to believe what he was seeing. We all thought he had gone mad. Then he called a meeting of the village and told that the drums contained poisonous chemicals. He said they had come from Italy. But Sunday Nana says, I don't know where's Italy. Is it in Europe? How innocent those villagers are. Mr. Sunday Nana stopped, frowned, a troubled look on his face. In the last five years, 13 people have died in this village, my own elder brother, one of them. They have been in pain, terrible pain. You don't die in a peaceful way when you're poisoned from inside. You suffer before you die. We have never seen deaths like that before. Lot of our children are sick. We have asked the government to take the drums away, but they do nothing. We have written to Italy, but they do nothing. The chief says we should move our houses to another place, but these poor people, they don't have land anywhere else. Where will they go? Look at this last sentence. It's heart-rending. We have to stay here. We have no choice. And they, pointing to the mountain of death in the clearing, are our neighbors. These people had to accept the fact that we have to embrace death. There's no other way. Nobody was helping them out unless and until the world forums gave them a voice. So what was all this about? Hazardous toxic waste that comes out of industries, yes or no? So there is a solution here. This is not the way to deal with hazardous waste. There is a proper study and research done for hazardous waste management, which the government must make compulsory for every industry that's set up. Dumping hazardous industrial waste in the ground is still the most common method of disposal. But then, one fine day you'll fall short of ground. Where will you go then? But there is a budding forest of potentially more wholesome alternatives. Wholesome in the sense, completely positive, completely useful. First one, public distaste for toxic landfills is so strong. That means people are beginning to disagree. No, you cannot pollute our lands is what people are saying. So new sites have not been allotted in the five years, in the last five years. So even the government is taking a step back. The leading option is incineration. What do you do with this hazardous waste that comes out? Incineration is burning it in a controlled environment, not anywhere on the road or anywhere. That is a perfect way of getting rid of some kinds of hazardous waste. Another kind, oxidation. They induce oxida oxygen into the waste and we are left with, after the process of oxidation, we are left with carbon dioxide and water. That's okay. Right? Better than dumping the waste. Next, did you know there are bacteria that eat hazardous um, organic waste? Research is also building a superbug that can eat the most poisonous of hazardous waste like DDT. So let's wait for that good news. Inorganic waste. Now this is a little problematic. Mostly acids and heavy metals, these are a little difficult to deal with because it involves a little expenditure on behalf of the company to separate the solids and the acids. But once that is done, 
the solids can go into the soil and the acids can go into the sewer system. So I hope this becomes mandatory soon. So a few new words before we wind up. Indigenes are natives. Elicited means evoked, brought out from within. Fora, nothing but a forum, place where ideas are exchanged. Counterfeit, fake, detriment, something that can cause harm. Picturesque, visually attractive, corrugated, series of ridges and grooves. You must have seen asbestos roofs. They are usually corrugated. Slimy, thick and smooth. Hazardous means dangerous. Wholesome, complete in a positive, completely positive way. Distaste, dislike. An incineration a process where burning is done in a controlled environment. And we are not yet done. We have to take up the tale of the two other villages too. Let's see what went wrong there. See you soon.